Here we're looking at some of the properties of real numbers, the properties of addition and the properties of multiplication. You've probably come across some of these before, words like commutative, associative, identity, etc. Uh, probably ring a bell, although if this kind of stuff is confusing to you and kind of gives you a headache, I think the best way to approach uh, having to do problems like this is to have this chart handy or something like it. Find something like this on the internet and print it out, copy this down in your notes, and then just use it to match up what you see to find the right uh, name for the property. But just to run over these really quickly, the commutative property says it doesn't matter which order you add two things in, x plus y is the same as y plus x, or which order you multiply them in. Same kind of thing. The associative property uh, looks at three items and says it doesn't matter if you add the first two and then add the third, or if you add the last two and add the first one to that, it comes out the same. And similarly with multiplication, it really doesn't matter what order you're multiplying things in. The identity problem, a little bit different in addition and multiplication. In addition, the identity problem says that if you add zero to anything, it stays the same. It stays itself. It maintains its identity. With multiplication, when you multiply by one, that's when something stays the same or maintains its identity. And then there's the inverse property. In addition, that means if you add the negative of something to itself, you get zero negative x is the inverse of x in terms of addition. In multiplication, it's a little bit different. The inverse of something in multiplication is 1 over that thing. So x times 1 over x, the inverse of x, is going to equal 1. And then there's these two other properties um, here, the distributive property. You've been doing this stuff. You know how this works. If, if something is outside a the set of parentheses, you multiply it through. So x times y plus z equals x times y plus x times z. And then there's this multiplication property of 0. That just states something you already know too, which is that if you multiply anything by 0, it comes out as 0. So let's see if we can look at a few of these in the wild and identify them. So this first one, we have 3 plus x times 5 equals 3 times 5 plus x times 5. Uh, I think what happened here is that these were distributed. So the 5 was multiplied by the 3, and the 5 was multiplied by the x. So this should be that distributive property. All right, let's look at this next one. We have 8 times w equals w times 8. This is multiplication, so this is going to be one of the multiplication properties. And it looks like, just like this one, if you re replace the x and y with the 8 and the w, you'd get this commutative property, which says it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. All right, the next one is y plus 0 equals y. This is addition, so it's going to be a property of addition, and it looks exactly like this one, x plus 0 equals x. That's the identity property of addition. All right, one more. We've got 1 over b times b equals 1. If you look on this chart, there's only one place where you see a 1 over something. It's this one. If you replace the b, the x with the b, and then just shift the pieces around a little bit, you get exactly the same thing. This is the inverse property of multiplication. When you multiply something by 1 over that thing, you get 1. So that's a little bit of work with some properties of addition and multiplication.